It's hard to breathe, but that's alright. Hush. Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to another video. Now, on this one, we're going to be explaining the actual driving force behind changes in price, and it's simply just the supply and demand. So, what are supply and demand zones, or just supply and demand in general? So, here's the definition, guys. So, the patterns that prices make on a chart um, are created by the activity that occurs in the market, namely buying and selling, right? So, like we said, when it comes to the basics, every buyer needs to be a seller, all right? So, remember that. Um, and pretty much the activity that occurs in the market are just like I said, supply and uh, buying and selling. And this buying and selling are pretty much dependent upon supply and demand. So to simplify things, um, demand is re represented by buyers, while supply is represented by sellers, right? So say for example, that a company releases a new phone. If all um, these phones can't move at the price at which they are being sold at, then the price will drop. And it'll continue to drop until price finds a balance with what buyers are willing to pay. And conversely, if there are more buyers than there are phones, uh, the price will then move up. Okay, so financial instru uh, instruments like currency, uh, currency pairs, uh, stocks, and cryptos are just no different, right? When when a buyer balks at paying 1.125 euros for one dollar, the price will go down. Okay, and when they are eager to pay that price, the price will then go up. Okay, so supply and demand trading is a system for identifying zones of supply and demand that we can use to make trades that give us a statistical advantage. Right, so how and why are supply and demand zones created now supply and demand zones are defined when an imbalance in the buyers and sellers occurs uh, and an easy way to visualize this is by thinking supply uh, as a commodity product so let's say oranges right and we could think of demand as shoppers so imagine that this was a good year for orange farmers they have produced a lot of oranges yet the shoppers will be willing to buy just enough that means there is more supply of oranges than there are demand for oranges. And now if the farmers wish to sell out their inventory, they would have to stimulate buyers to buy more. Now, the easiest way to do this is by reducing the price of oranges. Now, shoppers will consider buying more because the oranges are discounted or because now they can afford more, right? So the price will continue to drop until all the oranges have found the buyers. That would be the balance point, okay? The point at which uh, there are enough, enough buyers for the supply of oranges uh, in the market, okay? Towards the end of orange season, the farmers clear their inventory and the smaller supply of oranges is now available on the market. The same number of shoppers consume oranges as they normally do, so demand has returned to normal and there are a few oranges to sell, so the price will go up. It will go up to the level where every buyer that is willing to pay a higher price will find an orange to buy. Under these market conditions, that level is the balance level. Okay? As long as there are uh, enough commodity to what the appetite uh, of buyers, the price of that commodity will remain within a tight range. Now, when one side exceeds the other in volume, for example, if there are more offers than buyers, an imbalance will cause prices to change until it reaches the um, balance once again. This imbalance is identifiable on the price charts as a significant move from the current price level. If the financial markets, um, in the financial market, sorry, the asset is a product um, and the rate value is the demand. If the price is cheap, it means there is more supply than there are willing buyers. And if the product is getting expensive, that means there is more demand buyers uh, for less um, supply. So you use me use a tool, the Fibonacci tool especially, and it'll always come up the premium discount zone. So I reference back to that when it comes to supply and demand, okay? And we focus on the equilibrium. So supply and demand in Fox analysis, okay? So the supply and demand concept is literally timeless, right? It will always be the simplest, most atomic way of explaining why price changes, right? So the why behind price you often hear, this is it. Um, so this is because obviously the market is the place where sellers and buyers meet to conduct the business of exchange and put the product for the cash, right? So by understanding the, the supply and demand concept, it would be very simple to spot supply and demand zones on charts, although this would be a hindsight um, in opposition, right? It will give us a good hint of where to look for trades in the future, uh, and it's key to understand that the theory of supply and demand forex trading is based on analyzing and defining zones in the past. These zones determine where we should expect price to react in the future. So for example, every swing point that we see is usually a supply zone around that, um, as we spoke about market structure, right? Now, why should we expect a price reaction, maybe wondering? Well, let's get back to the oranges and shoppers. Let's say, for example, you could buy one orange at a price of $1. We have only five oranges to sell, but buyers are asking for 10 oranges to buy. So five oranges were sold at $1, uh, $1 sorry, and no sellers were found for the five remaining orders. Remember these five unsatisfied orders for later, okay? 
Obviously the price will jump to $1.50 per orange to attract more producers to provide more supply. Later on, supply exceeds the buyer's willingness to pay for these expensive oranges and the, uh, and the price drops back to $1. The five orders uh, at $1 per orange are assumed by uh, to be there waiting, right? Their request will be filled immediately as they are the first in time for oranges at the rate of $1. Um, and something similar happens in the forex market as well. So when the price changes, we can assume a high likelihood of unfilled orders. Uh, and these orders are waiting and they will be the first to be executed once the price returns for the first time to the demand level of $1. Now I will go on to uh, in a, a separate video on how to identify supply and demand zones on the price charts. Um, but I just wanted to quickly touch up on some uh, of this video really. So when it comes to supply and demand, um, you pretty much see a lot of patterns like demands exceed supply. Um, supply exceeds demand and you know you've got these drop base rally or drop base drop um, DBR and there's loads of different patterns right and usually all I'm just saying is you know the price in the middle here right so where the fair value so that's the equilibrium of price and the equilibrium is the range so when price is ranging you'll often see that's just institutions pretty much accumulating orders and then you should see a huge shift in momentum then price will then later on return back to the where the range was and then continue in the desired direction okay now this is the how the overall supply and demand works right they're just pretty much in simple terms supply needs to meet demand and demand needs to meet supply so they'll just meet in the middle so it's pretty much like for example you go on a facebook marketplace right you're selling uh, an xbox for 100 pound uh, you got a buyer who wants to buy it for £100. So pretty much in simple terms, you value the money more than the product and the other guy values the product more than the money. Uh, and another way to put this as well in when there's um, imbalances in price is pretty much when it comes to that is essentially, um, say for example, you're selling that same Xbox but for £150 and someone wants to buy it for £100. So you meet in the middle, right? And then that middle is the equilibrium. So for example, you someone someone offers you 125 You say, yeah, why not? I do 125 And then you both meet in the middle, so you're both happy. You go away with the money and the other guy goes away with the uh, Xbox, right? And that's the equilibrium, okay? So that's what happens in price. They need to be meeting in the middle, okay? So again, guys, thank you for watching. And that has been Supply and Demand Explained. I hope it's been simplified. There will be more... Um, more advanced um, throughout the course and it will you know obviously start to start to make sense um, but just understand um, supply and demand and it's you know it's very important and this example here um, if you just google supply and demand and economics it will come up with many um, uh, examples like this okay but this has been supply and demand guys and I hope you have gained value from this and I'll see you on the next video on actually how to identify supply and demand zones.